In the past years, introducing corpus materials to my students, I've had some requests for explaining how to make your own corpus. So I'll do that with the example of this journal I just was recommended by a student, the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery. And I want to add five articles to my corpus from here, and I'll just show you how I do it. It's pretty straightforward. I don't know any high-tech techniques, so you'll be able to follow along. The main thing is good organization, and you'll have your own system for this, but I'll just show you how I did it. So I keep the metadata on here. To get my articles, I decided to choose them randomly, and I used this number generator here, this random number generator, and I have my own system for what the numbers mean. Don't worry about that too much, but that's how I got these five articles that I want to add to my corpus. And I'll show you how to do that. So I am going to put them all into my database here so I can refer to this later. You don't have to do that, of course. And you might save yourself time by not doing it. But I knew that I was going to have a large set and I wanted to be able to uh, search through them in various ways. Anyway, you just need one program. Well, you need a browser, and then you need the notepad. So that's it. So I'm just going to basically copy and paste and be using the Alt Tab function to jump between programs. So I've already got that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that in my title here, and I'm going to collect my metadata. So who is my author? Blass, all right. And this is from volume 15, issue 10. Blass is from the US and Ohio State University. Again, you don't have to collect this metadata if it's not relevant to you. But I will show you one reason why you might want to keep it in just a little bit. So. Now it's just copying and pasting. For me, I'm not interested in the abstract because I know what kind of data I want. I just want to know how people write in uh, the body of the papers. So I'm also going to avoid any kind of figures or tables. I just want this kind of sort of text information. So that's the only thing you have to be careful about, is avoiding the unnecessary information. Then again, if you don't care if your data are a little bit messy, you might just want to get the PDF and do a control all, and then copy that onto here. But this doesn't take so long to copy and paste this way. and. I find it's really nice to not have the metadata included because that can really upset your results. Say, if you always have the page numbers and the uh, information of the article's name appearing again and again. So I've just copied and pasted just like that. It just takes a minute or two, and it's worth it for me. Maybe something you haven't thought about is how to save it. So. The name of your document is going to become very important as you search through the, the corpus material. So I'm going to name mine based on this ISO abbreviation of the journals. That's how I've named all of my files. So I'm going to put that onto here. But I'm going to just make it as short as possible because the shorter, the clearer. I'm most interested in the data of the journal. I'm next interested in where it comes from. So I'm putting the most in important information to me first. It's from the year 2013. And I, f I remember correctly, my person was Blass. And let me just make sure I've got the location correct. Uh, so I'll go back to here. Yeah, it's Blass. And this is from Ohio State University. So I'll just copy and paste that onto here. And that's all it is. Make sure that it's encoded in UTF-8. If you get that 
on one of these other ones, then your Corpus Linguistics program might not read it. Oh, UTF-16 is new to me. That one might be okay. It sounds like it's an updated version of UTF-8. So that's something I should look into. But anyway, for the moment, UTF-8 works just fine, and that's what I'm going to keep. So this is ready to go and put into your Corpus Analysis software. But I actually want to go deeper than that because I am making a separate corpus of just introductions. So I'm just going to delete all the stuff but the introduction. And I'm going to save this into a different folder. I have all of my introduction subcorpuses here, my introduction section. That I'll just put INT at the end of there, Control Z to get all of this information back. And I'll do the same thing for materials and methods. This way, if I just want to write, like say that I'm writing my results section, I only am going to search for all of my papers that are results. Of course, this takes a lot longer if you're going to do it this way. But in the end, what does it add? Two minutes? So I feel like it's worth it. Of course, I have done this more than 650 times. So two minutes times 650 does actually add up to a significant amount of time. So OK, I've already got my five open here. I finished one of them. Let me just do the second one exactly the same way. One thing that people ask me is how many papers do they need to do before they can generate some good data? It's a hard question to answer, but I would guess that for most things that you're looking for, at least 50? Issue 8. You know, I probably don't even need that information, but I keep it anyway just in case I might need it later. If you have 50 articles, you can probably start to get some interesting information, especially if you're taking from only one journal. So I've noticed that a lot of my students try to copy the types of writing styles that they find in their target journal they want to publish in. And that's a good idea because different journals do prefer different styles. And if you can really get to know the style of your target journal, that's going to help you. But 50 journals from 50 articles from a single journal would probably get you pretty far. So if you consider that you do it cleanly this way, and it takes, say, if you're not going to dis, um, divide up the four sections, you can do that in an afternoon. If you do want to divide it by sections like I'm doing, it may take you a full day. But I believe it would be worth it for you. If you have any advice for me, like maybe I'm doing something so obviously inefficient, let me know. I really might uh, be missing something that's obvious to you because I've done this all on my own. So uh, if you have any tips, write them in the comments.